It's Tuesday, and that means it's time for a new episode of Draw This. This is a special episode because it's my 50th episode, so I'm going to do something special, and I'm going to do a digital painting that is also animated. This is going to be a two-part series so that you can learn to do the digital painting first, and then if you want to, you can learn how to animate this using Adobe After Effects. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll do our digital painting first in Corel Painter 2015, and then once that's finished, we'll move on to Adobe After Effects. Let's go ahead and create a new canvas. We'll choose a standard television size, which is 1920 by 1080. This will work really well for YouTube. We want to make sure our resolution is at 72 dpi. Now we have a nice TV sized canvas. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then create a bunch of new layers. This is going to be basically each overlapping object in the scene here. I'm going to go to the sky layer and I'm going to fill that with a sky blue using the fill shortcut. Then I'm going to lighten the color, and I'm going to use the airbrush to paint in a gradient that's lighter at the bottom and gets darker as it moves towards the top. If you hold shift, you'll be able to paint in a straight line, so that'll help me keep things kind of straight along the horizon. I'm going to choose kind of a light yellow cream color and add that near the horizon. And now let's go ahead and define the actual horizon on the ground layer. We'll choose the rectangular selection tool, and we'll draw a nice horizon line right where that cream yellow color is. Then we'll choose kind of a light brown and we'll fill it. Now that we're done with this selection, we can hit Control D or select None to deselect that selection. And let's go ahead and move to the layer below the ground, which will be the cliff layer. This will be a cliff that's off to the right, and we'll paint that in with a mountain knife and a nice dark brown color. Now the mountain knife is a little strange. It shows you a flat icon that's horizontal, yet it paints with a kind of vertical brush stroke that wiggles about, but that's good because it gives you a nice random edge. You want to paint over the edge a few times just to make sure you fill it in pretty opaque because it's going to be see-through if there's anything behind it. We'll move to the hill's far layer and we'll use that same mountain knife just to go ahead and draw in a nice jagged edge. Just like that and we'll go over it back and forth a few times just to fill it in and make it nice and opaque. Let's go ahead and add a tree over on the left of the composition. I'm going to select the rough ink brush. Now the trick to drawing trees is you want the trunk to be the thickest part and then each branch needs to be slightly thinner. So I'm going to make each branch thinner each time it forks, and I'm going to make my brush smaller. I'm using a keyboard shortcut of holding Control and Alt and dragging my pen. That's Command and Option and drag your pen on the Mac. I'm going to go to the Cloud 1 layer, and let's go ahead and add a cloud now that we've finished our tree silhouette. And I'm just going to use the Jitter Airbrush to go ahead and paint in a kind of fluffy cotton ball shape. You can go ahead and hide the tree layer if it's in your way and then continue finishing your cloud. We're going to blend this and add some shading so it doesn't look so unrealistic. We'll go to the Cloud 2 layer and we'll add in a completely different shape for this cloud and just fill it in the same way using the Jitter Airbrush. Now the cliff is a little too transparent and the cloud kind of shows through it so what we want to do is we want to use the magic wand to select the background and then we want to choose Invert Selection. That way we're getting a selection of only the cliff and then we'll create a new layer and move it below the cliff, and we'll go ahead and just fill that in with a similar brown color that's a little bit darker. Now we've filled in the whole cliff opaque, and the cloud doesn't show through to the other side. Let's go to the cliff layer and let's turn on Preserve Transparency, and we'll use the Mountain Knife in combination with the Palette Knife to go ahead and add in some lighter and darker browns to create some shading and three-dimensional form. We can blend with the Coarse Oily Blender along with the Paper Texture, which I've cranked all the way up and that gives you a really nice texture effect while you're blending. So I'm kind of blending with the contours of the cliffs in kind of a curved vertical motion. I'll switch back to the mountain knife and add some lighter and darker areas to just kind of build this up and make it look a little more natural. I'm really just using my imagination here. Next we can add some texture by choosing Select Layer Content. That'll put a selection around that layer. We'll create a new layer and we'll call that Cliff Texture. We'll turn off Preserve Transparency and we'll change the composite method of that layer to Multiply. And then we'll use the sponge to go ahead and paint in some dark brown color. The square chalk brush also works really well for adding texture. So we'll just keep adding more layers of texture. You can add additional layers of screen and multiply as you like to just kind of build this up. And then once you're done, you want to merge all of those cliff layers together with Control E. And then you want to blend them using the Coarse Oily Blender, I'm going to choose Select Layer Content again, and I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to paint with the airbrush at the bottom with some light brown to kind of create some atmosphere. Towards the top, I'll sample the sky color with Alt, and I'll paint that in near the top of the cliff. I'm going to add a new layer for cliff details, 
and I'm going to paint with a mountain knife to add some little trees that are kind of above and below the cliff. And here and there I'll use the palette knife, which gives me some nice horizontal shapes. And I'll add a little bit of texture and blend and add a few foreground trees. Next I'm going to go to the hills far layer, and I'm going to choose effects focus soften. I'm going to reduce the amount of softening enough to where it just makes it a little bit blurry. I'm going to turn on preserve transparency and then use the airbrush to paint along the edge of those hills to give them some atmosphere as well. I'm going to go to the sky layer and I'm going to add a little bit of a darker blue near the top. And then I'll move to the ground layer and I'll do something similar where I'll make it lighter near the horizon and darker near the foreground. This adds perspective. And if we use a smaller airbrush, we can make some lines that kind of converge over on the right and that gives an additional sense of perspective. There's a vanishing point now. So you can just add a few lighter and darker areas that all kind of point to one of the corners there on the horizon. We'll go ahead and blend that a little bit using the coarse oily blender with some horizontal brush strokes. And we'll blend over that using the diffuse blur just to soften it a little bit. And then we'll choose select layer content and we'll put a selection around the ground and we'll create a new layer for that selection and we'll change the composite method to multiply. This way we can add a little bit of texture like we did on the cliffs using the sponge. But this time we want to use a smaller brush in the background and make the brush larger as we move into the foreground. And then we want to blend gently with the diffuse blur horizontally across to soften it. That gives it a nice sense of perspective. We can go to the ground layer and we can lighten it near the horizon using a little bit of that light blue sky color to set it into the distance. We'll merge the ground layers and then we'll duplicate that layer by right clicking on it and choosing duplicate. We'll hide the first layer that's on top, and on the bottom layer we'll soften it a little bit using Effect Soften Blur. And then we'll turn on the visibility of the top layer, and we'll add a mask to that. We'll select black and the airbrush, and we'll go ahead and paint along the horizon to go ahead and mask out some of that effect. So that creates kind of a transitional blur between being in focus and out of focus. Go ahead and merge those two layers together. And we can go ahead and merge those cliff layers together as well, the cliff atmosphere and the trees and all that. Let's go ahead and soften the cliff just like we did. The cliff is a little bit more in the foreground, so don't make it too blurry, but give it just a little bit of blur to set it in the distance. Let's go to the cloud two layer, and let's do a little work on this to make it look more realistic. We'll choose select layer content. We'll create a new layer, and this will be for the cloud shadow. We'll select kind of a blue green color and the jitter airbrush, and we'll go ahead and just paint right along the bottom edge of the cloud. That's where the least amount of light is. And that's also an area where it's kind of reflecting the environment, so you can sample from the cliff and from the sky. Then you can go ahead and blend the edges of that using the coarse oily blender. And then you can merge the cloud shadow with the cloud and go ahead and blend the edges of that with the coarse oily blender and the diffuse blur blender. Make sure preserve transparency is turned off so that you can blend the edges. Turn on preserve transparency and go ahead and select a darker blue color and use the airbrush to go ahead and paint away any white fringe that's along the bottom edge there that you get from blending. And we can turn Preserve Transparency off again and use the Coarse Oily Blender to blend. And it's kind of a back and forth process. You really have to just kind of keep refining it down smaller and smaller until you get these nice, realistic cloud details. And anywhere that you get white fringe that you don't like along the bottom, you'll have to go through and paint over that again with a darker color. So it's okay to blend the edges near the top because that doesn't really hurt anything by adding white. But near the bottom, it's going to be kind of a nuisance. Use the diffuse blur to paint over everything to soften it a little bit. And then you can also use something like the turbulence distortion brush to create some nice effects. We'll turn preserve transparency on. We'll darken the bottom again since we added a little more fringe. And now let's go ahead and use the move tool to just test this. This is kind of our pretend animation here to see how it'll look. I think that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and just blend it a little bit more using the coarse oily blender to make it look a little more unique. Let's right click on that layer and duplicate it. And we'll move one of the duplicates kind of down and off to the side, and that'll create kind of an interesting layered effect. And then we'll go ahead and merge those two layers together and blend them with the coarse oily blender and the diffuse blur so that they look like a unified cloud. Let's test it again with the move tool. And we may need to darken the bottom a little bit more and maybe blend a little bit more. So let's go ahead and do that over on the right side. Let's hide the cloud one layer and let's repeat that entire process on the next cloud. So we'll select layer content, we'll shade the bottom, we'll blend it, we'll shade the bottom more, and we'll blend it and we'll duplicate it. Let's go ahead and soften both of the cloud layers using the effects focus soften. We'll start with the first cloud and we'll soften it just a little bit, but not too much to destroy all the detail. We'll do that to the next cloud, just hide the other one that was in its way. 
effects focus soften and soften it an equal amount let's go ahead and add some shrubs now on the shrubs layer I'm going to open up my nozzle libraries palette and I'm going to look down in the nature category for shrubs you're going to have to select an image hose brush that's called linear size P that's that first one there and then this works a little bit better if you just click with your mouse so I'm going to click with my mouse and make some little shrubs here and there and everywhere you want there to be a nice balance generally they should be bigger in the foreground and smaller in the background and let's choose select layer content and let's add a little bit of tinting to these shrubs on a new layer so we'll create a new layer we'll call it shrubs tint we'll make it a multiply composite method and we'll use the airbrush to put in some browns and some blues but basically we want it just to be a little bit darker in the foreground and a little bit lighter in the background let's reduce the opacity of that layer just a little bit to make a more subtle blend we can do it before and after to see the results let's duplicate that shrubs layer and let's make the bottom layer a multiply composite method we'll nudge that down a little bit after selecting the move tool and that'll give us a little bit of an underneath shadow let's erase all those shadows near the horizon with the eraser because they don't look right but all the ones in the foreground we can keep let's go ahead and just merge all of those shrubs layers together along with the ground and we'll just call that layer ground let's go ahead and show the tree now and we'll do a little bit of work on the tree let's free transform that and scale it up so it doesn't look so small click the check to commit and let's reposition it with the move tool somewhere where it looks a little more interesting now let's add some detail to this tree we'll choose select layer content and we'll create a new layer for bark we'll use the linear size P image shows brush along with the nozzle that is called bark it's at the top of the nature category and this will give us a nice black and white bark texture We'll just cover the whole tree and then we'll add some tinting on a layer above that so we'll create a new layer for the tree tinting and then we'll go ahead and just fill that with kind of a dark blue color similar to our sky color and we'll set that composite method to multiply now we'll select white and the airbrush and we'll just kind of paint down the center of all these big branches just to kind of give them a three-dimensional shading so we're kind of doing the shadows first and then the highlights second we're removing the shadows to create highlights We'll merge all of those tree layers together and then we'll choose select none to clear that selection of the tree and then we'll go ahead and soften that just like we did with all the other elements this can be kind of out of focus or in focus it's up to you i think that looks pretty good so i think we have a finished painting in the next video we're going to animate this using adobe after effects so if you have the free 30-day trial of after effects or you happen to own after effects we can do a really cool animation, a very simple animation that anybody can do with some tools and some layers that are a lot like the tools and layers that you would use in Corel Painter. So if you're interested in learning how to create a piece of animated digital art, check out part two of my Draw This 50th episode special.